I had the very clear idea that what I was doing was journalism, that I was a journalist, not a scientist, and that my goal then wasn't just to find interesting things and explain them, but to find news, to find stuff that was happening and report on what was going on right now on the front lines of science. Here was a thing that I started to hear about from scientists that was really new. Well, just the word made me think, you know, need to know what that is. Once scientists were aware of chaos, then suddenly it was everywhere. It was starting in all these different fields. Benoit Mandelbrot, who was the father of fractal geometry. Mitchell Feigenbaum was a theoretical physicist. And Edward Lorenz was a meteorologist. Suddenly, here were scientists looking at questions that had to do with everyday life. If you wanted to describe the shapes that you see in nature, this stuff was really appropriate and useful. Nature is not an orderly thing. It's about fractals, about branching, twisting, things that curled on themselves like a snake eating its tail. So Mandelbrot would say lightning is not straight lines, mountains are not cones, clouds are not spheres. These are fractal shapes. When a leaf or a fern divides and subdivides branches and branches again. The same fundamental fractal patterns are found in ferns and also in things like the structure of our lungs. And he justified that by explaining the underlying mathematics. Mitchell Feigenbaum discovered a kind of universality that linked previously unrelated classes of equations, and it gave scientists a whole new tool with which to pry apart these different types of dynamical systems. It gave them confidence that they could study these systems and get real results. I could say that Edward Lorenz, the MIT meteorologist who discovered what we call the butterfly effect now, was a starting point for so many scientists with the notion that a disturbance in the atmosphere as small as the flapping of a butterfly's wings in Peking today can change the track of a storm on the other side of the globe three weeks from now. Chaos is a kind of science that deals with the parts of the world that are unpredictable, apparently random, not necessarily random, disorderly, erratic, irregular, unruly, misbehaved. The future of science is an appreciation of disorder. The things that people are going to be working on for a while are disorderly things. What's really happened is that chaos has become part of the mainstream. And the things scientists discover have the ability to change our lives in the most profound ways.